G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be taking another look at the trade period. I kind of said that I was going to be done with trade period videos until after the grand final, but uh, what the hell, why not one more? Uh, a number of weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, I uh, made a video about why I thought the Eagles would almost certainly draft Harley Reid and uh, that probably is still going to be the case, but the, the chatter won't quite go away. So I thought I'd make a video exploring the possibilities of what it would actually look like to trade Harley Reid. Now, when contemplating the question, do you trade pick one, I actually think that's a, probably a bit of a silly question to ask. I think there's got to be a, a level at which someone would trade Harley Reid. There is a point at which it will exist for everyone, threshold of, uh, of a good enough offer to let you get rid of pick one. So the, the real question we need to be asking ourselves is what actually is our own personal threshold for trading pick one and giving up Harley Reid. Now I know Ryan Daniels came out and said that um, you know it, it seems right now at this current point, West Coast is more likely to keep Harley Reid than trade the pick one to a rival club. Now, that's probably true, but we have to consider there's a little bit of water to go under the bridge still, which I think he even says that himself. And at the time he said that, I think North Melbourne hadn't been given their priority picks. Furthermore, we also don't know what, uh, what banding of compensation Ben Mackay is going to uh, generate yet for North Melbourne. Is it going to be pick three? Is it going to be pick 19? Are they going to force a trade and Essendon have to stump up something in return? We don't know yet, but the prevailing thought generally out there is that it will be pick three. I know I've uh, fed a bit of fuel into the fire of rumor about how Essendon aren't going to offer a contract offer big enough to generate pick three's compensation, but we'll say for the sake of argument that in this video they do. Now suddenly if North Melbourne are armed with picks two, three, what is currently four, as well as picks 19 and 21 or something in this year's draft, suddenly their collateral is a lot more capable of coming to us with an offer that is acceptable. Now the latest rumor during the rounds is that uh, North Melbourne's likely best offer for a pick one and in essence Harley Reid, well it certainly won't be picks two and three. Uh, North Melbourne would be crazy to give that up. So I'm probably not even really gonna entertain that in this video. Would I do it for pick two and three in a heartbeat? What is a more likely offer from a North Melbourne perspective? Well, it's been rumored around the traps that uh, three top 20 picks, which would look like uh, what would become picks two, 15 and 20 in this year's draft. Now I've made a big case about uh, how I think uh, Harley Reid probably would be good for us from a you know a morale point of view to the fans. Suddenly the Eagles have a poster boy back on their list, uh, someone to you know focus on in terms of their marketing. He is going to be the the face of our new generation, you'd think. And you know is that putting undue pressure on an 18 year old? Probably. But there has to be a threshold at which um, a deal would be good enough for us to accept. And I am sort of I'm a little bit on the fence with it to be honest. But I do think an offer of two, 15 and 20 may actually be in the best interests of our football club. But as it stands, uh, we have picks 1, 19, 33 and 38 or something like that. But if we're thinking about it in real terms, when you consider the academy picks, father, sons and free agency compensation picks that are going to dilute this draft, you're probably more looking at like 1, 23. Someone suggested it could be out to 26 by the end of the free agency period, uh, then 35, 38 and you know 53 or whatever our next pick is after that. And when you consider the we're the wooden spoon team. I don't feel like that's a particularly sexy draft hand to hold in this year's draft, particularly when I think subjectively the top 25 is where a lot of the talent currently is. Now we have the draft camp to consider as well. That's going to potentially see a few bolters come up and players getting picked a little bit earlier, pushing down some of the talented kids into the 30s and 40s, maybe. Now, if we hypothetically accepted this uh, offer I just suggested from North Melbourne, in real terms, what the actual picks are likely to be, again, I could be off with this because there's probably more free agency deals I haven't even heard about yet, but we could go to the draft with picks 3, 19, 23, 24, 35, and 38. So that's six picks in the top 40. I think we're going to probably get Matt Flynn and Tyler Brockman and most likely miss out on Devin Robertson. So hypothetically, we push that 38 into next year's draft and then reset for next year. But you know, the prospect of foregoing Harley Reid, as good as he is, I do think there's some handy talent in this year's top 25 that I do want to get onto the list. And you know, the draft as well is becoming such a diluted farce at every single year that Getting some guaranteed top 25 picks in now, particularly with the prospect of a very diluted draft next year with a probably record level numbers of, you know, academy picks and father-sons as a Camparelli, Camprioli? 
Camprioli, that's how you say it. There's a Welsh, there's another Ashcroft next year. I don't know, for me, I'm starting to come around to the fact again, and I'm gonna flip and flop on this, and this probably won't be the last video I do on this channel on this particular topic. But for me, getting some more access to top 25 picks when I think there's a talented bunch of players in this year's draft, I'm pretty open to it. While I do really like Harley Reid as a prospect, and he's probably a safe bet to become a very, very good player, and he does actually have a lot of the attributes we probably lack on our list, and, uh, namely ground ball ability, contested ability, versatility as well. You know, he can play literally everyone on the ground. There is also the, you know, the elephant in the room is the fact that the kid has been built like an AFL player since he was about 16 years old. So it shouldn't be a foregone conclusion that this kid is actually that much better than, say, a Colby McKercher or a Zane Dersma. I don't know. I'm actually not really making case one way or the other. What we're really trying to establish is what is the threshold that you would give up pick one. So for argument's sake, I've gone ahead and come up with a little mock draft for West Coast uh, based on what we have now and then what we could potentially have. Okay guys, before we continue with the rest of the video, I do have an important message to share with you. As you'd know, this year, True Footy has started working with the fantasy platform called Game Day Squad. And on behalf of Game Day Squad, I have something pretty awesome to share with you. And that is, if you haven't already, that they have just launched for AFLW. That means you can start fresh with a new squad and team, and again, win weekly prizes. This is your chance to get ahead of the game and make a team for the start of the brand new season. So make sure you follow the link in the description to both creating a team on Game Day Squad and sign Signing up to the True Footy League, which is of course completely free. Let's transform women's fantasy Aussie rules into a sensational reality. So this is all very subjective. We're all gonna have different opinions on this, but these are the five picks that I think we would probably take currently. So pick one, Harley Reid. If we have pick one, that is a no brainer. Um, our second pick probably comes in at around the 25 mark. And uh, that's where I'm probably going Mitch Edwards. I think we have to go balance of mids and talls in this draft or smalls and talls rather. And Mitch Edwards projects as a very good young West Australian ruckman. And I don't think we sorted out our long-term ruck situation yet. So even if we get Matt Flynn, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Mitch Edwards. Then you're looking at picks in the 35 to 38 mark. And you, uh, I don't know, Angus Hasty is a running defender. He's a player that's caught my eye. Clay Hall, pick 38, a good uh, West Australian midfielder. And then at pick 53, we kind of hope that Lance Collard, our next generation Academy talent, gets bid on after pick 40 and we can match with whatever we have after that. I mean, it's not a bad hole on paper, but I just, for argument's sake, did one with, uh, with the potential offer from North Melbourne. So it, roughly estimating what our picks will be um, before or after after uh, academy picks and you know the free agency stuff, it, it's it's really hard. But I've had a crack, and I reckon it'll probably be you know pick three because Jed Walter will probably be pick one or two, most likely pick two. Then pick 19, 23, 24, and 35. So let's see who I would take in that scenario. At pick three, I think we're widely tipped to take Daniel Curtin. My personal preference would be Colby McKercher, but if you if you like Daniel Curtin, you could go the key tall uh, pick three. At pick 19, Charlie Edwards, a uh, good bolting midfielder out of Victoria. I've still gone Mitch Edwards at. 23 and then to 24 you could make a choice so if you've gone with McKercher at the smaller player at pick three you could go for uh, Zane Zakastelski at uh, pick 24 he's a young bolting probably key defender at the next level player from Claremont however if you've gone Daniel Curtin at pick three then you probably go a smaller type in Jack Delane someone who is likely to be there who is a uh, very productive small forward then at pick 35 I'd probably just take Lance Collard because that's our last list spot anyway and I really want that kid on the list so you're really comparing which draft hand you would really prefer. And maybe this might go over some people's heads if you're not really following the draft. But if you are, you'll probably be able to make an informed opinion about what you think is the better value there. Also, uh, as a funny little note, if that draft does happen, which it probably won't, but if it did, we would have four Edwardses on the list. And I think that would be hilarious. But the other thing with, with this particular draft hand that we're going to have, um, it also gives us a little bit of flexibility to trade up. And one option we would have is... The Western Bulldogs currently have pick 10 and they're likely to get rid of that uh, and try and get Gold Coast pick four. Gold Coast are going to accumulate points, but that means that Gold Coast are going to have pick 10 at some point. Is there a chance that they're willing to trade pick 10 to us for uh, what is currently 15 and a, maybe a future second round pick? So what's that, pick 21 next year? I don't know exactly what that looks like, but it does give us a little bit of collateral to try and trade back into the top 10 of this year. Mind you, with uh, the Academy picks in Walter and uh, Ethan Reid, that probably becomes pick 12, but you still get some pretty good access to talent there. So hypothetically, this is a phantom draft for what would happen if uh, we were able to pull that off. Uh, we would have pick three and again, have the choice between McKercher or Dan Curtin. Personally, I'm a McKercher fan, so that's the way I would go. Uh, at pick 12, you still have access to some really good players. And one player I really, really want on our list is Caleb Windsor. He's a tall outside midfielder, strong mark, good intercepting player. He's good kick inside 50 as well. I think he would do really well on our list. All 
there's someone like Darcy Tucker potentially available. At 23, again, you'd probably go Zach Estelsky if you haven't got Curtin. But if you do have Dan Curtin, you'd probably go again for the small forward in Jack Deline. I don't know. These are just ideas. You could go Charlie Edwards again. Pick 24, I still want Mitch Edwards on the list, so I'm going to keep picking him in each of these scenarios. But again, a nice balance between tall and small. And at 35, again, last list spot, we'd go at Lance Collard. So this is all trying to map out exactly what uh, it would potentially look like if we traded um, these picks to North Melbourne. And the reason I picked the 2, 14, 19, again, like I said, it's a bit of a Bigfooty rumor, and I do think it's more likely in the realistic realm of what we would be offered and what we would potentially accept. Again, I didn't think it was really worth it to try and map out what uh, having picks two and three from North Melbourne would look like because I just don't think that's realistic. North Melbourne wouldn't do that. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think of me mapping out these potential phantom drafts. Um, but more importantly, just let me know if you're an Eagles fan, would you trade pick one for uh, this potential deal for North Melbourne? And as neutral fans as well, if you're watching this, let us know what you think the Eagles should do in this scenario. And um, it's an exciting time. Obviously, it's been a tough year. This is the exciting time of the year. I personally, I'm not so super married to the prospect of Harley Reid on our list. And if we do draft him, I would be as excited as anyone and I would embrace him with open arms, obviously. But this is an important time for us to get right. And I do think there is a temptation there to try and get as much, you know, top 20, 25 talent onto the list. And if you look at, you know, the premiership teams this year, sorry, the grand final teams rather, there is a minority who have actually been, you know, top 10 picks, but certainly top five picks. Luke Hodge remains the only player drafted this century who has won a premiership at the original club he was drafted from. I don't know. I think I'll hopefully be happy either way. I think uh, we're in a good spot after a terrible year. You'd want to be in a good spot. So again, guys, just kind of hypothesizing about what the future could look like. I find this fun. Let me know in the comments your feedback. But anyway, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.